Neil, we're a day away, mate. How excited are you? Yeah, very excited. Um, you know, obviously, always playing a test match is, is a real exciting opportunity and, and, and you know, something that's, um, I guess, any kid's dream, I guess. And, and to play against England, I guess, in your own backyard is, is always is quite a big prospect. So it's, it's something I think everybody is pretty excited about and, and looking forward to the challenge and, and hopefully the, the weather plays its part as well. Well, if you look back at history, last time we played them at in Tauranga, you did pretty damn good, mate. Yeah, uh, it was obviously quite a fun sort of memory, I guess. Uh, it was a pretty exciting test match. It sort of went right down to the wire and, and a pretty exciting series. We've, we've always had pretty uh, exciting series against, against England, um, wherever it's been, you know, in England or in, in New Zealand in our own conditions at home. So, uh, yeah, it's something to look forward to and hopefully, you know, obviously we can put up another spectacle of a ping ball test um, starting uh, that we can hopefully put on a nice show for uh, for the public and for the people um, yeah, who follow us. So we're looking forward to that challenge. Oh, look, and I know, you know, it doesn't really have any great connection, but I tell you what, if you can put a smile on people's faces, you know, who are doing it tough with the weather and that at the moment, I mean, it's always fun, you know, if you can't do anything else, sitting back watching a game of test cricket, mate. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, I guess current circumstances, um, you know, there's a bigger scheme of things, bigger pictures. There's a lot of people who have been affected by this and our thoughts are with them and, um, it's been pretty pretty tough times, obviously weather-wise. So, to be able to to know, hopefully the sun sort of comes out and, and plays ball, and if we can put some smile on people's faces and give them some good entertainment to watch, it um, yeah, it'll obviously go a long way. So, uh, pretty exciting, like I said, to play test matches is something you never take for granted, and everybody's sort of looking forward to that to that challenge. And I think it makes it ever, I guess, a bit of extra sweet side on it that we just recently played them in England, and what was quite an exciting. I guess series, and we go on the wrong side of it. Hopefully, we can find a way of rectifying that and and put them under pressure and and, and back out. Yeah, I mean those were the ones that got away, Wags, weren't they? I mean, let's be honest about it. Three tests, mate. We had you know big chances in all three of those test matches. Frustrating as hell. You still, you know, I mean, does that does does that still rankle? No, I think you sort of put it to bed. I think you you learn from it and you go with it. I feel, um, you know, with all three of those tests, uh, I think every result was possible until uh, you know r- right up to the last bit of the day and. It could have gone anyone's way, and, and they got on the top side of it. And in the past, you know, we've been on the, the top side of that and, and walked away with wins against them and, and two series wins at home. So I guess that's the way the cookies sometimes crumble with two quality teams when you when you play against each other. Um, you know, it's going to be a test right up to that last day. So I, I guess for us, you know, is to try and obviously work on, on those little things, that, that little small, I guess, margins that we lost against them in that series to try and be better at that and, and make sure we don't let that slip out of our graphs this time. So uh, I guess still play what's in front of us. We're still going to play, you know, our natural game and, and be nice and positive and, and, and try and, I guess, adapt to, to whatever they throw to us. Um, and hopefully this time we'll, we'll be a step ahead of them uh, in, in that sort of, I guess, uh, aspect. But, yeah, looking forward to that challenge, that quality team. And obviously with Baz there, he knows us uh, pretty well um, in that sense too. So... Um, yeah, it'd be quite nice to get one up on him and, and, and obviously uh, change things around from, from the last time. Neil Wagner is with us. Black Caps up against England tomorrow in Tauranga, first of two tests and then at the Basin Reserves. Uh, no Kyle Jamison. Matt Henry's awaiting the birth of a child, but no Kyle. What a bummer for him. I mean, we've been waiting so long for him to come back. He looked pretty good against and when New Zealand A were playing them and now he's got another stress fracture. Yeah, extremely gutted for Kyle. Um, you know, yeah, it's uh, he's worked extremely hard in the last little while to get back to, to bowling fitness, um, you know, he's he's put the hard yards in, and and quite frustrating when you when you see everyone else play and, and you're sitting at home and all you do is driving to the gym and, and to the training ground, getting yourself fit and ready, and to put those yards in and, and finally get back to to fitness and playing, and then something like this happens is a it's a bit of a setback to him, but he, he's got a great head on his shoulders. Um, you know, he's within one of the leaders in the group too, and uh, and obviously still a huge part of our future. So. Something like this is, is obviously quite, you know, frustrating and, and, and sad for him. But I think, you know, uh, on the hindsight side, they sort of know, I guess, what to do now and, and to get him back to fitness uh, quickly. I think um, he'll, he'll bounce back from this and, and no doubt we'll, we'll see him back soon as well. So he's a big loss for us. He's been a, a huge part of this team and um, we all wish him very well and, and a speedy recovery and, and hopefully that, you know, can take care of itself, I guess, real quickly. He's in, he's in pretty good hands. Wiggs, how do you stay? How do you stay so fit and so injury free? I mean, it's a real toll that it takes. I know that bowling, a uh, pace bowling test cricket is just one of the weirdest things you can do to the human body. And you know, so many players they get injuries. Uh, you know, little niggly injuries. How have you stayed so? Seems to stay so injury free. <laughs> Touch wood, mate. <laughs> um, Go yeah. on. 
Uh, I, I guess you you get um, you get a lot of niggles and you can't deal with it. I guess in, in some way. I've been very fortunate. I don't know if it's just um, uh, I, mean, I guess my anatomy or my genes or whatever I've got with it. But yeah, I've trained really hard. I guess the the hardest thing is to to keep motivating yourself to do that hard yards and keep I guess training that hard because it it does take its toll. Um, you, you have to put in a lot of hard work off the field to try and stay fit and stay injury free. Um, and you got to keep doing those sort of I guess those extra little bits and pieces you got to do. I do cheat my body well, to be fair, honestly, as well. I do like to, to have the odd, you know, sweet thing and, and the odd beer now and then too. So, um, but yeah, when it comes to time, when, when you get yourself ready for a series, you've got to be strict in, in your diet and what you do and, and train really hard. So it's something that I've uh, I've put a lot of, uh, you know, pride on myself and my performance and what I want to, you know, do as, as a cricketer. So uh, I've been pretty lucky and hopefully it can continue, but... Yeah, a lot of hard work goes into it, and, and I guess full credit goes to, to Chris Donaldson and our support staff who obviously keep pushing you to do these sort of things and, um, yeah, keep up the track with you of that too. So, um, yeah, pretty lucky, mate. I, I guess a lot of people put in that hard yards as well and, and, and fences like Kyle and, and then get an injury like this is pretty gutting. So um, I've just been very fortunate not to, to have had that sort of touch for it stays that way. Neil Bangers, with this first test approaching fast, it's tomorrow. Neil on the platform with us. Preparing for any test series, do you do you go through the same mindset for every single opponent? Because you walk out on that white lines, you just basically slam it as soon as you do. You've got that attitude, you've got that look in your eye, you've got that fire, you know, you just want to compete and bowl every ball as fast as you can, get every bastard out. I mean, is that you know, do you, is it does it get any more complicated than that for you? No, it's, I think any test match you play, regardless of who the opposition is or where you play, you bring that same intensity because, like I said earlier, every test match is something that you treasure. It's never, it's never you can't take it for granted. It's never you know guaranteed you're going to play a test match. So to, to represent your country and get a black cap is a huge honour. Um, so that, that obviously leads within itself. I think the hardest thing is the older you get is to try and bring that same intensity in, in other games when you don't play in front of a crowd or... Um, I guess the extra noise that's around and, and television and that, it sort of gives you a bit of a lift, um, I guess, playing in front of your friends, your family and, and, and playing for your country. I guess that's the the, the sweet thing of that. That's, that's easy to sort of obviously, I guess, lift you up and, and give you that sort of drive. But when you sort of play a game and there's no one in the stands, that's sort of where you have to sort of dig a little bit deeper and it's it's harder to get that same intensity, I guess, in some sort of way. But, yeah, whoever I play for, if I play for Northern Districts, um, you know, I put a lot of pride in, in my performance and, and what I bring into to the environment or to the team and, and wanting to contribute. So um, playing for New Zealand is, is something that, that I, you know, it's it's uh, there's no better feeling. It's it's something that's, um, I guess, it's, uh, there's a lot of people who would give anything to be in, you know, I guess, the boat that you are. Um, so you've got to be really grateful for the opportunities you get and, uh, and make the most of it. So I, I guess that's where that... Intensity comes into, and like I said, if you're playing Bangladesh, England, or or Australia, it, it, it doesn't matter. It all goes exactly the same for me. How good was it watching the Australians bat against the Indians, mate? I mean, like I know that we struggled over there in the white ball as well, but I don't know. There's something. There's something as a New Zealand cricket fan that we just adore the fact that watching them and watching them. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I can't comment too much about it, but I, I know how you feel. Um, yeah, I, I guess, um, yeah, it's not an easy place to play. We've obviously had first-hand experience of it. I guess the gap now from home ground advantage to, to playing away is becoming bigger and bigger. I guess the way that uh, people are playing in their own backyard is, is becoming more and more, I guess, a tool of success to be able, with the Test Championship and how things are structured, I guess, um, having to win at home and the importance of winning it, uh, it becomes harder and harder to play away from home and, and people are becoming really good in their own conditions. So when you do win away from home or have success away from home, um, it's even more and more, uh, I guess, uh, extra special in that sort of sense. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not easy for circumstances to play in over there, but that's why it's called test cricket. And I guess the beauty of test cricket is it, it tests yourself in, in every way and in, in, in every format. So, um yeah, I guess that's the beauty of the game. Uh, yeah, it's nice to see that we're not the only ones who's struggling there, which is quite nice, I guess, as a as a, as a cricketer. But um, yeah, you always want to try and keep improving and and be able to try and nullify that and and, and be effective against opposition away from home. Neil Wagner, with us. A couple more questions. I'll let you go because I know you're busy. You've got plenty on your plate to do today. Against Pakistan in Karachi, a couple of tests there last year, and look, they seem to be a bit few and far between, which is why it's so. 
you know, it's just so pleasing to actually get some hair and finally on home soil over the <laughs> summer, even if we can't call it a summer. What was that whole experience like, mate? I mean, going to Pakistan, playing test cricket there again, was that something that as a, as a test cricketer you've always wanted to do? You've talked about playing away from home and that, you know, you made your debut against the West Indies, uh, you know, but to actually go to that part of the world and play there, what was it like? Definitely, I think as a kid growing up, you know, you used to watch test matches um, of Enzimun or Huck and those sort of guys playing there and, and scoring a lot of runs. And it looked pretty tough back then too. But um, you always, as a cricketer, grow up and, and think, you know, playing in the backyard, sort of mimicking things and go, I want to play there. I want to try and test myself there and, and see if you can have some success and, and, and do something special. Um, and, and, yeah, it's something I, I really wanted to do. Obviously, with circumstances, the way it's been, we haven't been able to go there for quite some time and um, yeah I'm not going to lie you sort of didn't know what to expect when you got on the plane going there but we were uh, very warmly welcomed and and, and felt extremely safe during the time and and had an amazing time off the field we were um, treated amazingly we were put up an amazing Christmas uh, lunch and dinner um, when we were there and and, yeah the hospitality was amazing Uh, cricket side of things were a hell of a lot tougher than what I ever thought it was probably arguably one of the the slowest and toughest conditions I've ever faced and come across um, as a fast bowler, which uh, doesn't give you much. So you have to try and work out ways. And, and in a short period of time in a test match, you can't just try and, I guess, try and find your way in a test match. You have to try and, I guess, have some sort of impact. And it was pretty tough as a fast bowler and, and a tough place to play. And again, it was two, two test matches that we just got on the wrong side of it due to time running out. I think um, it could have been quite exciting if it went a distance um, and we could have gone the right side of it. So we played some really good cricket there again in, in trying circumstances and tough times and you know, obviously being away from, from your family and loved ones over, over Christmas never nice. But uh, yeah, we were really well looked after and the experience of it was, was pretty amazing. Finally, in terms of just the history, 247 wickets now, 300 club. I mean, that's such an exclusive club. Freddie, Freddie Truman, the first to get there. Tim Southey's there. I mean, he was there. And, and, and Trent's there. I mean, we've only got a handful of us that have done this in New Zealand. Is that a target for you? Do you set those targets for yourself? Uh, no, I don't. I wish I could. Um, I feel like in the past, if I've, uh, when I've set targets myself um, personally to try and achieve, I think it became too much of a, a focus point that, you know, I sort of don't feel like I had the success um, that I wanted. I think when I was younger, uh, if I knew this and I wish I knew this when I was younger, I, I wanted to play wide ball cricket so bad that I try to, I think the intensity was too much around it that I wanted to try and do this and do that to try and work my way into to the wide ball team uh, rather than actually finding a way of contributing and being successful um, and playing a role, I guess, the team for us to win games and, and let the other stuff take care of itself. I think once I started to learn and do that, I think that sort of just took care of itself. Um, you started to take wickets and before you looked up, someone said, oh, you got 200 test wickets and I sort of felt quite surprised and had to pinch myself and I think there was a better way of looking at rather than sitting dreading on 199 wickets about how I'm going to get my 200th wicket. It, it becomes a, a distraction and a, and a different focus point and uh, I mean, Kane is a, a firm believer in not wanting to worry too much of their personal accolades and, and it's something that as a group, we've we've learned to grow and um, in that sort of sense, I guess, to, to worry about the team first and rather than worry about your own personal, I guess, achievements. And, and that's something that's been, been huge for me and I think a driver behind my success is even if I take no wickets or take one wicket or five for whatever way I can contribute to someone else being successful in a day and if it sort of swings and roundabouts and goes my way, then then it's, it's quite nice and, you know, rewarding. But... I guess whichever way I can play to make New Zealanders proud and win test matches, that's the ultimate goal that drives me. And the rest of it's a byproduct and a and a bonus of it, which um, luckily has, has worked out quite nicely. So hopefully, um, with more test matches to win, the 300 mark could hopefully uh, tick itself off. But it's not it's not a, a personal achievement or goal for me now. Thanks for being so honest with that answer. All the very best. Finally, just going back to the weather. Look, I'm giving you a forecast. Windy tomorrow. Uh, sun breaking through Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Look, absolutely peachy days, beautiful days, mate. So so how's the weather impacting today, the final day before this test match? Are you, are you, can, you, can you actually get outside there? Can you actually do some, do some stuff on the ground or are you indoors? Well, uh, not much of a sleep last night, to be fair, with two kids and, and the wind blowing around. I had to tie trampolines down and a few bits and pieces. Um, <laughs> it was a bit of an early night last night, I guess, I and, and sort of just, uh, we quite close to the beach, so um, you sort of had to keep a bit of an eye out, which wasn't great. But, hey, we're pretty fortunate and lucky at Bay Oval to have that marquee, which is obviously like a bit of a glass house. Um, 
Yeah, well, greenhouse, I guess, not a glass house, a greenhouse in the sense that you can train inside there on grass. Um, the facility is pretty amazing. I think a couple of years uh, back, you wouldn't have been able to train at the moment. You'd be stuck indoors and uh, and be limited to, to training facilities and going into a test match pretty fresh. So uh, we're quite lucky that we're going to be able to do that again today um, yeah. inside there and have a pretty good training. And it sort of looks like a bit of blue sky wanting to pop out and, and show itself, which is... Quite nice, especially I guess with the summer we've had up north, um, it will be quite welcoming. So uh, we're pretty sick and tired of the wind. Um, so hopefully those peaches today you mentioned coming uh, will make a nice, uh, I guess, uh, uh, yeah, uh, a nice. And it's <clears throat> I think we lost you. Hello, Wags. Yeah. <laughs> we talk for so long, maybe, yeah, <clears throat> maybe it's uh, he's run out of bed for him. Devlin. Words matter. I was going to put him, uh, put, 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 excuse me. The Platform.